15 years, so I might be a little bit older than I look, but um, I started off, um, I went to a high school in southern Wisconsin, then went on to do four years of schooling at UW Lacrosse, uh, graduated from there, and went on to Marquette for another four years, and then eventually on to orthodontic training for three years. So I've been at it for a while. Um, but I kind of want to tell you a story about basically, a lot of kids have questions about the education requirements and for college as well as is going on to dental school as well. Is this juniors and seniors? Who here has gone to tour college or multiple colleges? Who here has no interest in going on to school? Anybody? Okay. All right. Um, have you been to multiple colleges? Kirsch, been multiple? Okay. Um, who here has been outside of Wisconsin? Okay. So, as I mentioned, I went to La Crosse. Um, I toured every state school. I went to, uh, you know, the surrounding states. And I guess I found a college that was appealing to myself, more so because of what I was interested in in high school. And by that I mean I was looking to go somewhere that had physical therapy. Um, in high school, I blew out my ACL and my MCL. I spent a lot of time on the table, so I'm like, this is what I want to do. Ended up at La Crosse and absolutely hated physical therapy. Okay? It's a tough pill to swallow when you think that you've got your life all in line and all of a sudden it throws you a curveball. So I worked at uh, Gunderson Lutheran Hospital for four years and then decided to change my major. So I went there originally kind of thinking sciences, but I switched from basic science to biomedical science and eventually um, majoring and minoring in biology and chemistry. Um, one thing I can tell you about the experience is, is that as you get older and if you truly think you want to be in the medical profession, you got to work on your grades. Okay, I know that they say now, I'm 45 years old, I'm just going to throw that out there so things have changed from when I was your age, but um, I spent three hours with your guidance counselors last week talking about back when I was in school, you had to take the SAT. You don't have to take the SAT anymore. Okay, back when I was in school, GPA was king. GPA isn't that important anymore. What you're doing right now as juniors and seniors is affording you the ability to apply to college and get into college, hopefully. Once you're into college, erase that slate, you're starting all over. Okay? Now you're looking to what do you want to do beyond college? Do you want a bachelor's degree? Do you want a master's degree? Do you want a doctorate? And it depends on how much you enjoy schooling. Okay? If you love school even in college, you might proceed on and do something for a doctorate. So when I was in at La Crosse, as I mentioned, I spent a lot of time looking at physical therapy, hated it, and then switched on to eventually dental school. Um, the other thing that I really recommend at your age, if you have not done this at this point, you need to job shadow. And what I mean by job shadow is get out, find people like myself who are willing to have somebody look over your shoulder for the day and harass them and ask them a lot of questions. I work with 50 women on a daily basis, okay? Um, it's different than what I expected when I first started, but you learn to evolve and learn to interact in a way that's necessary to get the job done on a daily basis. So you get to see not only what you do as a profession, but how to run a business. Okay, everybody asks, what do you do for a living? And they say, oh, you straighten teeth. I'm not in the straightening business. I'm actually in the customer service business. So if I suck at what I do as far as communication skills, you're not going to stick around. Okay, you're going to come in, you're going to be like, that guy's weird. I want to get that guy out of here. I'm going to go to the place next door. So in town here, we have three other orthodontists, and if I'm not good at what I do, I'm out of business, okay? So it's more than just straightening teeth. It's more whatever you choose to do. You gotta be charismatic. You gotta, if you can't talk to people, you gotta hire somebody that can talk to them for you, okay? Um, does anybody here had braces? I'll ask that question, okay? So when I was your all's age, I would say if I asked that same question, it would be two people out of 100 that had had braces. Now it's a little bit more commonplace. It's more of a vanity item. So I would say that 70-80% you know, of the population has had some type of Invisalign braces, some type of teeth straightening product in their mouth at some point. Does anybody here have any idea how many dentists there are in the United States? Just give me a wild guess. In the United States, how many dentists? Just roughly within 10,000. You know, you raise your hand. What, how, how many think? Say, throw a number. Yeah, I saw you raise your hands. No, I missed it. 
So there's about 40,000 dentists in the United States, give or take. How many orthodontists are there? 8,300 in the United States. So why am I telling you this story? It's, it's however far you want to, I guess, push yourself in the scheme of a profession, meaning that you can come out of school, you can go to work, okay? You can work at Crystal Finishing, and you can make, you know, $22 an hour, and you can do that the rest of your life. You can go to undergrad, you can get a bachelor's degree, you can go get a great job, and you can, you know, make $40, $50 an hour, do that the rest of your life. The further you climb the ladder, the more income you have the potential to make, and in my opinion, the easier your life is, okay? Everybody says the phrase, money doesn't buy happiness, okay? But it sure helps. Okay, anybody that tells you money's not important is lying to you because obviously all have shoes on your feet. Ask uh, so another question. Here's your question. What percentage of people in the world own a cell phone? Why everyone? Just take a guess. What percentage? Anybody? 100. 91% of people own a cell phone now. What's the average cost of a cell phone? Too much. $850 is the average cost. A new iPhone 14, is that what we're at? $1,200 for the max. All right, so when you say that money is not important, you're kind of lying to yourself. Now, it can't be your driving force for any profession, but you want to be able to have the opportunity to make money. The further you climb the ladder, even in dentistry, the more opportunity you have to make money. Okay? Everybody asked me the question, what got you into it and why did you know what you do? So when I was at Marquette, um, and I was kind of wavering on what I wanted to do, I ran into a guy at a baseball game who was tan and he was smiling. And my dad's like, go talk to him. So I, and I owe Dr. Youngquist this because I wouldn't be sitting here without him. And I said, what do you do? He goes, I'm in the customer service business. And I said, well, what does that mean? I mean, that's a vast field. And he goes, I straighten teeth. And I said, oh, perfect. It's hard. He goes, it's really easy once you get good at it. So I shadowed him for the better part of a year in and off in checking out what he did and, and really enjoyed it. And that led me into the dental school field. Um, who here has any medical professionals in their family? Anybody? Nurses, doctors, anything? Okay. Do they enjoy what they do? What's, get, what's your name? Fast to go. Me? Yeah. Oh. Um, my grandma was a nurse. Grandma was a nurse. Mm -hmm. Does she love what she did? Um, she's retired in like 15 years, but she really likes it. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else have? What's... My mom's a radiation therapist. Okay. Does she love it? Yeah. So what does she hate about it? Yeah, probably. I mean, she just loves, like, she just works with the patients all day. She doesn't really have anything. Gotcha. So, those of you, again, I'm not bashing on anybody else's profession, but those of you who have medical professionals, my dad's a physician, everything's changed in this field. Okay, and what I mean by that is if you have a nurse, a doctor, they no longer run their own business. They're usually managed by a hospital setting where they don't control their hours, they don't control their pay, they don't control their patient base. Okay, the nice thing about dentistry still is you have the ability to own your own business still, run your own business and set your own hours. And for that reason, I have the ability to come in here this afternoon and talk to you guys. A lot of times you don't have that luxury. So other than, you know, working with youth, the other thing that I really enjoy about it is my lifestyle, my ability to spend a lot of time with my family, my kids. I do a lot of coaching, you know, spend a lot of time with the community members, things of that nature. Um, anybody here... I'm sorry, you say you're juniors and seniors? Okay. Anybody here on a scholarship next year? Anybody that's thinking about going to school? Got school academic scholarships? Okay. I'm going to stop for a quick second. Does anybody have any questions right now? Perfect. This is a quiet crowd. So, nobody wants to ask, like, what my day is like, what my hours are like. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate that. <laughs> so, my schedule right now is I, I work um, I work Monday through Thursday, okay, which was a tough thing for myself because I work less than my parents work. Okay, so when you would show up every day, you got Friday off. It's a great luxury. Okay, um, the one thing that I love about my job is that I love working with this age group. I don't see adults anymore. When I first started, 
I saw adults. It just wasn't my mix. So I switched it where we had an age group who cut them off at 26. Okay. thing I hate about my job, so I don't know if you are familiar with first impressions, but we have a lot of offices. We have now 12 offices in north central Wisconsin. I travel to four of them. So what I hate about my job is two days out of the week, I get in the car, I drive an hour, I go to Medford, I go to Marshfield, I go to Rhinelander, and that's a lot of windshield time where the roads aren't the greatest in Wisconsin. So I'd say that's the one thing I don't really enjoy about it. Okay. Another common question is how much money do you make, right? Who everybody wants to know, hey, where do you stack up against a nurse versus a physician? <coughs> My wife is beautiful, okay? That's how much money I make. I'm not nothing to look at. So what I say is, is that at a young age, they told me I either had to be good looking like Kirsch or I had to make a lot of money. My wife's beautiful. That answers the question. But the reality is very comfortable. You can make as much money at this profession as you choose to make, meaning that however often you want to work. If you want to work Fridays, you want to work Saturdays, you want to work till 6 o'clock at night. Okay? What I will say about any medical profession is do not go into a medical profession for money. If you go into it, you're going to hate your life because you're going to get addicted to it and you're going to sit there all day every day and want to make money. Okay? Why do I enjoy it other than working with you? I like to see the transition from when somebody comes in and their teeth are a little bit crowded and they're pretty self-conscious about themselves and when they get all done and they're smiling year to year and they're ready for the graduation photos and they're real happy about it. Okay? A lot of you all can relate to that. When I was your age, I had horrible acne, my teeth were all jacked up, nothing to look at. Okay? But as I got a little bit older, that cleared up, straightened out my teeth, and a lot more confidence, obviously. Okay. As far as colleges, okay, what I recommend to you guys at this age is start to find something that you're remotely interested in. If you are really good at English and you hate math and science, probably not looking at the medical field. Okay. With that being said, in dental school, I sat next to two English majors. The difference is when you go from undergrad where you may take a lot of science courses and you go into dental school, there's a lot of academics. Okay, so your first two years of dental school, I'll describe it, you're going to take a lot of didactic stuff. You're going to take biochemistry. You're going to take anatomy and physiology. You're going to take pathology. All these classes that may have been a repeat of what you already had in undergrad, which makes your life a lot easier. When I went to Marquette, for instance, I had great training at lacrosse. So I graduated top of my class in dental school because I already had the foundation set up where I knew everything that I was already going to be doing then. Kids that were English majors struggle a lot because on top of that, you're also getting your hands on mannequins and you're working on patients and things like that. So you think your class load is tough right now. In dental school, we average four tests a week. Okay, And I'm not saying that to scare you guys away. But it was basically, that was your entire life. You're not going to be going out and having much socialization at nighttime. On the flip side, we had kids, if, if you want to go on beyond dental school and specialize, does anybody know what there is besides orthodontics and dentistry? Um, pedo, pediatric dentistry is working on kids. Um, perio, working on the gums. Endo working on root canals or hollowing out teeth, and then there's oral surgery, where you're basically pulling wisdom teeth. Okay, so if you want to go from dental school and look at specializing when you get all done, again, your grades matter in dental school. Okay, halfway through dental school, you can take a board exam, and if you pass that, you get to go on to your junior and senior year in dental school. If you don't pass that, you get to stay a sophomore and repeat. Okay, um, the scariest thing and the biggest deterrent for dentists and dental students and orthodontics right now, loans. Your parents, anybody, parents talk about loans at your house? Okay. Guess what the average debt load is of a dental student coming out right now? Ladies in the back, you guys have a lot to say, just not to me. What's the average debt load? You guys have been chatting the whole time. What do you think? Give me a rough number. What's the debt load of a student coming out of dental school? Like 300 Keep going. Anybody else? Higher. Double one. The average debt was seven hundred fifty thousand dollars coming out of dental school. So I came out, and I'm not saying again, I'm not saying it's scary, but it's a heck of a lot of money, right? So I came out of dental school. I'm very open with all my finances. 
$450,000 in debt. Okay, which obviously is a house times two that a lot of people don't own and still paying off down school loans. Okay. I encourage you all that if you have the opportunity to watch a video, it's called the Ivory Tower. So they, they follow a student that came right out of high school and worked. They follow a student that um, came out and did a two-year um, tech school, and then they follow a student that got their bachelor's and came out and did a four-year school. And they talk about you know, income levels and lifestyle. And basically what happens is, is if you have somebody come right out of high school, as I mentioned, is working right away, they do this their entire life. They creep up, but it's just a steady creep. Okay. You get somebody that does tech school, they do this, they drop a little bit with loans, and then they come up and then they plateau a little bit higher. You get somebody with a bachelor's degree and a doctor or something like this, they go way down, which is the problem that most scares most people, but then they have a higher escalation once they get out, faster repayments on their loans, and then they plateau at a much higher level. So I was told at a really young age that you know, I'm not a better investment than in yourself. Guess fall asleep then. No. No. Perfect. Is it hot in here? Yes. Yes. So from dental school, when like I said, when I went in originally, I wanted to go right on orthodontics. So I didn't really have any interest in doing anything other than studying and then applying on to orthodontic training. In dental school, it's just like trying to get into a college. You submit your grades. And they have a screwy program called the Match Program, where you go tour all these different colleges, and uh, you basically get selected. If they like you, you like them, you get in. If you don't, you're a dentist. Now, if you're a dentist, I don't know if you guys go on a regular basis, but a dentist can also perform root canals, perio. They can straighten teeth. They can do all that stuff. They just can't hang a sign out front that says they're a specialist. So it's still a great, great profession. It's just I chose on to be one of 8,000 versus one of 4,000 people. Okay. <coughs> Welcome. Perfect timing. As far as finally a familiar face. You're wearing retainers, right? Oh yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> um as far as my daily schedule, just to kind of give you a little layout of what I do. On average, I see about seven people a day. Okay, at first impressions, if those of you who have been there or have not been there, we have about four chairs where we are seeing adjustments. So I start at 7 30 in the morning, I get done at four. We have those chairs pretty much rotating all day long. I have four assistants, I have two front desk workers, I have a TC. And then plus we have three insur insurance verification agents. At first impressions, we have 160 employees. You said our, our team meeting total. So I think another thing that I encourage you guys to figure out: Are you an expensive child, or are you a less expensive child? What does that mean? What's an expensive child? No idea. I'm talking about. I'm talking about like when it comes. I'm talking in general, Kirsch. What's an expensive child? Kirsch. Somebody who needs a lot of things. Somebody who needs a lot of things. Like a $600 hunting outfit. Well, it's not even pays for it. So what I mean by expensive versus not expensive is exactly what you described. If you're a young man or woman who requires a lot of money to survive, you better figure out right now what you need as far as a profession, okay? My brother and I are both orthodontists. My brother and I live completely different lifestyles. I'm an expensive child, he's not an expensive child. We have the same exact income. If you go to his house versus my house, completely different, okay? Well, why I'm telling you this story is, is I've got expensive kids, okay? And I preach to them every single day. You better make money because these things that you all have that mom and dad are paying for right now are soon to be your responsibility. When you hit 18, have a nice day. You're off the payroll. Okay, so the reality is you guys got to start figuring this out for yourself. The cell phone, the new shoes, all the clothes, the cars, the gas, all those things start to stack up. Um, the one thing I will say that I was real disappointed about in life, in school, in general, is money management. Okay, I was afforded the ability to come out of school and make a lot of money. Nobody ever taught me what to do with that money. So what do you do? You come out of school, I didn't, have, uh, I didn't have a car, I lived in a crappy apartment, I went and bought a car. 
I went and bought a house. You know, I got married, had kids, and all of a sudden you're like, Ch -ch -ch -ch, and your debt is going deeper and deeper and deeper. So I encourage you guys, even being that this is a medical oriented uh, room, get out and find, figure out some finance, okay? Other than just knowing what money is, figure out what to do with money. Do you guys take any investment classes? Does anybody know what a 401k is? You know what a 401k is? Yeah, I started. You started your own 401k? Yeah. Through, uh, Are you single? Yeah. Well, not maybe. No, you're not. Yeah. But what I'm saying here, you got a good editor. Thanks, ladies. But no, you learn what a 401k is. Learn what a Roth IRA is. Okay? Talk to your parents about taxes. Who here has a job? Okay? Who here didn't know what taxes were until they got their first paycheck? And you're like, oh crap. Why did they take money out of my paycheck? I'm poor. That was me. Okay? I had no idea when I was your age what taxes were. My parents were very, don't be concerned about money. First job, that's a great question. I worked in an ice cream stand. That's, so I worked in an ice cream stand. I was then a janitor for four years. So I worked in the off time at the high school. And then I worked for Cisco Food Service. You know what Cisco Food Service? I was a truck driver. Super awesome job. Delivering food to restaurants. But I gotta give him credit, that's where I met my wife. She fed me at one of the restaurants, so yeah, last time her quick. But um, yeah, getting back to money, money's important. Figure out what those are. 401k, it's an investment program, okay? So when you guys start making money, if you can put it in there, the compounding interest, when you get to be my age, if you start contributing at a young age, a lot easier life, okay? Does anybody know what the difference is between a 401k and a Roth IRA? We're going finance class now, okay? Don't you like have to pay the taxes for the 401k when you put the money in and then for the Roth IRA? No, when you take it out, you pay the taxes. And then for the Roth IRA, you pay the taxes right away when the money's going in instead of taking it out. Tax-free at the end. Yeah. Yep, you got it. 401k, it's taxed at the end. Roth IRA, it's taxed at the beginning. Mix them both, okay? When you have different finances, meaning that when you're young, you don't have a lot of money, okay? So you want to more so contribute to something that is after-tax dollars so that it can grow. Okay, then when you have a higher income later on and you start taking money out, you don't want to be taxed at that money because you're going to be in a higher income bracket. So when you have all that student debt, how do you balance like investing and paying off? You, you just want to like, pay away from investing for the Interest rates. Okay, let me explain that. If your student loans, so I had three student loans coming out. One that was at 3%, 7%, 9%. Okay. I have the ability to consolidate all those into a 4% loan or pay off the higher interest run rate ones quicker. Okay? Now, if you have an investment strategy over here that's returning 5%, you're going to want to pay off these two first and then start investing before you're going to pay off the 4%. But so you're still making 1%. So it's all a game of interest rates. So whichever one is higher interest, whether well, you want to pay that off first, but if you're making more money on your investments here, then you want to start investing. So that's again a big game of balance. Great question though. The best thing I can tell you guys is if you start making money even at this age, put some way to have their money work for you. Don't put it in the bank. Okay, where they're paying you, what's the interest rate right now? 0.01% at BMO Harris. Capital One right now, just today is 4%. Okay, know where you're putting your money and have your money work together for you. These are all important things when you have expensive kids you can pay stuff off. Any other questions? Vanderbilt, what's your question? Oh, you I showed up late. Yeah, I was actually an econ. I love it. I love it. So she had the question of, no. She had the other question of, what would I be doing if I wasn't doing this? Do you enjoy your job? Thank you. That's a great question. Yep. 
I love my job from the aspect of seeing the change that it affords you guys. Okay? Um, I work in a clinic that there's seven dentists, seven pediatric dentists, two orthodontists. There's good things about having a big group practice where you can talk to other people, bounce opinions off them, talk about finance, talk about life, talk about raising kids. We've got guys that are retiring and gals that are just starting, things of that nature. Okay? In a group practice, there's also a lot of negative. There's a lot of opinions. How many of you have siblings? Quite a few. You along with your sibling? Yeah. Rarely. You do? Great. That's awesome. Me? Yeah. No. You hate your sibling? What? You hate your sibling? Only like two of them. Okay, you're on camera. Just... <laughs> That's okay. Alright, they know it already. They won't see it. Yeah. But there's a lot of opinions, so trying to accomplish a lot is a challenge at the time. So you guys got to figure out what do you want as far as your career down the road? Do you want to be in a group practice where somebody else takes care of a lot of the other stuff, or do you want to be your own boss? Okay? I'm really good at talking to people, interacting with people. I hate hiring and firing people. Okay? Picture if you walk into a room and this person's not doing their job, and at the time I'm 28 years old, I just graduated school, and I gotta let this gal go who has three kids, is barely getting by, but she's terrible at her job. Not a fun day. Okay, because I looked at it as, hey, this is my mom, but I got to tell her she no longer has a job. If you're not good at that, you might not want to be a business owner. Okay, on the flip side, with a group practice, we have people that love doing that, but they hate talking to people. They love doing ADP. They love doing payroll. They love crunching numbers. They love paying taxes. They love paying rent, building buildings. They don't like talking to people. So with all these people combined, we make a pretty strong practice because we can grow as a group. On the flip side, dentistry is one of the few remaining medical professions where if you don't like Wausau, you can pretty much go anywhere in the United States and if you have the money, because you got yourself out of debt, you can start your own business. That means you have the ability to go rent a space, buy the chairs, and hang a sign up there that says, Kirsch's Tea Straightening. Mullet's welcome. Yeah. That's a great, great perk of the practice. So your license carries from state to state? It does now. With, with um, COVID, they kind of went and just said you can pretty much go anywhere. Previous to that, you had to um, take it where it was like north central Wisconsin and it was like eight states. But um, yeah, that's a great, great perk versus Again, some of the other professions, nursing, and some of the doctors. Do you have a question? Uh, do you anticipate that changing back at any point, anytime soon? As far as medicine changing back, or well, um, no, like the uh, borders and the issues with licenses. Um, probably not. No, I, I just don't see it. I mean, with the luxury that's afforded people to travel and uh, the lack of access to care for a lot of places, I think that's going to stay similar. Um, as your parents probably have heard, or you guys have experienced. The workforce is depleted tremendously. So like nurses, respiratory therapists, things like that. So it's it's hard to keep hospital staff. It's hard to keep a lot of I mean, heck, my biggest concern lately was trying to go to Taco Bell and get a taco and it's closed at noon. I mean, this is crazy, the world we live in right now. So it's, it's, it's changed drastically just the workforce and the ability to to keep businesses open for that reason. There's a lot of people like myself that want to travel, like you might have a satellite link in another state now where you can go and work. But yeah, it's, 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 it's one of the professions, or a few that are left. Medicine's gotten, like you mentioned, taken over by a lot of the hospital community, so it's a little bit of a challenge. The other, um, the other aspect that I love is I don't have call. So my dad used to wake up in the middle of the night, three o'clock, go deliver a baby. I don't like waking up at three o'clock in the morning. Okay. I enjoy maybe five, six emergency calls all year, meaning that after hours, when I leave the office, I go to coach or whatever it is, I don't want to have to call in and, and don't have problems. So it's a great reduction in that in this specific profession. If you guys at all love blood, guts, the whole nine yards, you're really into surgeries, you want to make a big difference, oral surgery. Okay, And I encourage each and every one of you, if you want to do it, to be an oral surgeon. There's a lot more even orthodontists in the world than there are oral surgeons. In the community of Wausau, there's three right now. Okay, They have an eight-month waiting list. Eight-month waiting list. 
the average oral surgeon in town makes grossly about $3 million a year. That buys a lot of cell phones. Now, I'm not saying that that's what they take home, but they make a lot of money. Eight month waiting list. So you can literally come, hang a shingle, and have patients walk in your door the next day. So when I really encourage it, and I say that from an aspect that we need more professionals in town that are willing to do that because we can't send our patients anywhere. I'm sending all my patients to Green Bay right now. So a great, great profession if you guys ever want to consider it. Did you send them to Green Bay because you don't think they're going to be down or I'm on camera, sorry. <laughs> Okay. No, but no, it's more so the, the waiting list, and they have a lot more access, like they can get them in within a couple, three months. So. Absolutely. Any other questions? Any pops in your head, guys? Nothing you can think of. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you some time, because I know you guys got to get going here soon, but the reality is if you guys ever want to, come in and shadow. If you ever have questions, I strongly encourage it. Okay, and the reason for that is that's where you need to start and figure out whether you like something or you don't like something. The worst thing in the world is to go to college, you know, spend even $100,000 on an undergrad and get out and not have anything to show for it. And I, I say that because I see that a lot. The Ivory Tower is a good video to watch and it talks about $50,000 or two years. If you haven't figured it out in undergrad, at this point, $50,000 spent out of your pocket or two years in school, get out. Go back, live with your parents, and figure it out because otherwise you're going to accrue a debt load that you're not going to make up coming out in the general population and working. Okay, but as I mentioned, if you ever want to come in and shadow, give me a holler. Anything else? What the job shadow look like? You're looking at it. Job shadow curse is it really what it is? Is you come in. I'll talk in depth about the business aspects of it. I mean, most of you, if you've experienced braces, kind of know what it's like to sit in a chair. You don't know what it's like at the end of the day to balance a schedule. For instance, like if I put braces on three kids in six weeks, I got to make sure I have three more spots in my schedule. Okay, and I've got a person to do that, but I got to make sure that person is doing their job because if not, that six weeks comes and. We're too busy. We don't have enough assistance to take care of those people. So the behind the scenes stuff, the financial management, the payroll, the stuff that it, it takes to run a business. Because they, as I mentioned, they teach you a lot in school. They don't teach you a lot of the business aspects and the money management. And a lot of that I was forced to figure out on my own. And by the time I figure it out, I'm 45 years old. It's a lot, it's, you're too late to the game in a lot of aspects. So, but no, it, it, it's a great opportunity. You might come into the office and follow me around for a day. You get to see pediatric dentistry. Um, some of you might not be interested in that much schooling. You get to see hygienists. You know, you can go to the tech, get a hygiene degree after a couple of years, come out and make good, good money. You know, 30, $30 $40 an hour. And they, we have eight, on average, about seven, eight hygienists working in Wausau on a daily basis. You can pick their everything. So it's, 